The Changing Nature of Medical Errors, Case Example of Computerized Error, by Dr. Robert Wachter. In collaboration with the Institute for Professionalism and Ethical Practice. Briefly tell you a story of a case that happened at my institution uh, a couple of years ago. A 16-year-old kid admitted to the hospital for an elective procedure uh, was supposed to receive his Septra, which is an uh, antibiotic he was taking for years for uh, prevention of infections. He had a, a, a genetic immunodeficiency. And his dose of Septra was one double strength pill twice a day. That had been his dose for years. However, in the course of writing for that dose, the resident in making an error, uh, putting in a milligram dose instead of milligrams per kilogram, which can often be quite confusing, she thought she was putting in uh, milligrams when she wrote 160, which is the correct number of milligrams, but it turns out that the, computerized, the computer was set to milligrams per kilogram. That turns out to be a very subtle change. It's easy to look at that screen and not recognize that you're writing for milligrams per kilogram instead of milligrams. But in the act of doing that, in the act of not recognizing the mode she was in, the milligrams per kilogram mode, she was prescribing a 39-fold overdose. The child weighed 39 kilograms. Okay, you might say, that's terrible, but now there, are, there must be lots of fail-safes built in to catch such an error before they cause harm. Well, let me tell you what happened as soon as she wrote that order for 39 Septra pills when the correct dose was one. An alert fired. Well, of course it did. This was a 39-fold overdose. But in, uh, in her day, when she admits a, a sick kid who is on 12 to 15 medications, she will get alerts on about five of them. In the course of a month at UCSF, there are about 20,000 alerts sent to the doctor about medications. And at the time, at least, the alert for a 39-fold overdose didn't look very much different than the alert for uh, these two drugs might have an interaction with each other. In other words, there was no gradation of alerts, nothing to signify that this is really a, quite a terrible error. She clicked out of the alert. She ignored it because that really was the culture of the institution. People get so many alerts that they had just learned to largely ignore them in order to get their work done. Okay, so now there's an order for 39 Septra as it goes to the pharmacist. The pharmacist sees that doesn't, in the same way the doctor didn't notice, he doesn't notice that it is in uh, milligrams per kilogram rather than milligrams. He approves the order. He gets an alert. He clicks out of it. Why? Because in a month at UCSF, we order 300,000 medications. The pharmacists get alerts on 150,000 of them. You heard that right, 150,000 alerts in a month. And so even as careful and meticulous as they are, sometimes they get busy and distracted while they're dealing with these alerts. And so the pharmacist, for the same reason that the doctor didn't notice it, the pharmacist didn't notice that this was he was now approving an order for 39 antibiotic pills when the correct dose was one. Okay, now in the old days, the, what would have happened would have been a, a label would have been printed out. It would have gone to a pharmacy technician for 39 antibiotic pills. The pharmacy technician would have picked up a big bottle of antibiotic pills, started pouring them out, and about halfway through would have said, what the hell, this can't be the right dose, would have stopped and asked the pharmacist. But I think you can guess what happened next. It doesn't go to a pharmacy technician anymore. It goes to a robot. The robot sees an order for 39 antibiotic pills, and the robot says, sure, I can do that. It pulls 39 pills out of the shelves, shrink wraps them, barcodes them, sticks them on little plastic rings, puts them in a little bin, and sends them to the floor of the, uh, this child's ward. Where a young nurse, about a year into her work at UCSF, floating on an unfamiliar floor, sees this order for 39 antibiotic pills, and says, that seems kind of weird, goes into the drawer of the medication machine. There are, in fact, 39 antibiotic pills. Thinks to herself, that's still a little bit odd, but I know that to get to me, it had to go through a doctor and a pharmacist and a robot, and they have alerts and all sorts of fail-safes. She says, it still seems a little weird, but I better double-check and be sure it's right. Rather than double-checking in the way she might have in the old days, by tapping the doctor on the shoulder or calling the pharmacist, she double checks by trusting the technology. The technology is the barcode machine. She barcodes the first pill. The barcode machine at that point in the medication safety process, its job is to defend the order. So the barcode believes that the correct dose is 39 pills. She barcodes pill number one and the barcode machine says, that's not right, I need to see 38 more. As she barcodes 39 pills, tears them out of their little shrink wraps, puts them in a cup, they almost fill, uh, half fill a cup, 
gives them to the 16-year-old child, and, she, and the child took all of the pills. The child had a grand mal seizure but did not die, could have, spent a week in the ICU, and he's okay today. There's no question that we must computerize, that computerization is making healthcare better and safer. But we need to appreciate something that, uh, that Harvard psychiatrist uh, Ronald Heifetz and leadership expert Ronald Heifetz talks about. He talks about adaptive versus technical change. Technical change is like baking a cake. You just put in the technology, you put in the new process, and you just follow the recipe and everything's okay. And I think we had this illusion that computerization of healthcare was technical change. What we have come to realize in the last few years is this is the mother of all adaptive changes. It's far from technical change. It requires deep understanding of the impact of technology on our workflow, on our relationships, on our communication patterns. I think we came to believe that computerization would just fix our communication because we could communicate to each other via the electronics. But it turns out that not only do they not lessen the importance of human relationships and, commu and communication, Actually, I believe they heighten it. And so what we need to do, sure, the computer programs have to get better, the technology has to get better, but we need to get the human dimension of computerization right, or I think we'll continue to see unanticipated consequences. Thanks very much. Reflective exercise. Please post your responses on the comments board for this video so that others may learn from them.